Hey guys, welcome back and welcome back to another Elestrals video. Uh, a little late. Uh, I had work from 12 to 8 today, and this this update came out at 10, and I was already getting ready, so I didn't have time to actually make this video. So we're here. It's like 9 p.m. at this point. <laughs> um, so we're already almost 12 hours past uh, when this actually got announced. But um, we have some more residents of Tartarus, guys. Um, I think this is very interesting. I have a lot of interesting thoughts about this. A lot of people have been more, what's the word? Um, I guess agonistic about this one, but let's get into it. So, uh, start things off with obviously the bands. We have Spark It. We, you know, we have Spark It. Uh, however, earlier today, Drataya was banned. So, this is a ban I don't think anybody saw coming. Uh, this is this is absolutely a card that I don't think has topped once, and yet they elected to ban it. Now, for anyone that does not know why they banned this, let's quickly talk about it. Drataya is a part of the Fruit Engine. For anyone that does not know what Drataya does, Drataya says, when a player casts Ambrosia, draw two. Uh, and based on how Elestral's effects work, that effect was not once per turn. It was a when effect, which meant that every single time that happened on that turn, you could do it. So, and in base set, this wasn't really that big of a problem. You would just play three Ambrosia, cool. What are the chances you're realistically going to be able to draw all three Ambrosia? It's relatively low. This was essentially a once per turn with base at Trataya just because of that. However, Frostfall introduced Ambrosia Cornucopia, which not only drew you an additional card, it was three additional copies of Ambrosia, uh, which made Trataya a whole, whole lot better. So, however, this card was not banned in Frostfall and it was not a problem in Frostfall. What happened in Daybreak that made it a problem? Realistically, nothing. Uh, realistically, um, you could do this whole sort of deck in Frostfall. It wasn't as good. What I'm talking about is Waspire FTK. For anyone that does not know what Waspire FTK is, or what Waspire is, let's quickly pull up Waspire. Let's go find Waspire just real quick, just so everyone can see what that card does. Waspire is a 5-1-2 cost that says you can disenchant one fire from an Ignector or Waspire to force your opponent to expend two. This can be activated any number of times on your turn. So, essentially what this card said is if you got 10 spirits under Waspire, or I should say 11 spirits under Waspire, you could just disenchant 10 from the Waspire, burn your opponent for 20. Now you might be questioning how on earth this is even possible. Well, there was another card that ended up getting released in Frostfall that we'll quickly go to, uh, called Exalt Flare. Exalt Flare says you can Nexus two fire, up to two fire. When you do, special will send this Exalt Flare to an Elestral with enchantment cost of one or two fire from your hand. What this allows you to do is get Exalt Flare in your hand, get Hephaestus on the board, uh, and have a Waspire uh, on in your hand as well. You normal cast the Exalt Flare, uh, activate its effect to special to special send a uh, next. Sorry, Nexus two from the Exalt Flare. Uh, sorry, Nexus two from the Hephaestus onto the Exalt Flare to special send it into a Waspire. Waspire at this point would have four spirits under it, so you'd be able to burn your opponent for six. However, what this also allows you to do is Exalt Flare. If you are able to Nexus 2 from a Hephaestus onto the Exalt Flare and special send into another Exalt Flare, you can then go Exalt Flare effect again to Nexus again to put an additional 2 and an additional 1 on top due to the Ascension, and then go Exalt Flare, uh, sorry, ascend into another Exalt Flare, go Exalt Flare effect one more time to Nexus 2, and then, and then put an additional 1 back on. This is even better when you are able to pair this with 
uh, Ash Rabbit. Ash Rabbit being able to recur your Exalt Flares from the graveyard is, sorry, Underworld, is uh, even better because you can do this even more times. This led to a relatively consistent FTK um, where you would just go Exalt Flare, affect a bunch of times to ascend into more Exalt Flares, and then ascend into another Exalt Flare, ascend into another Exalt Flare, and eventually you would be able to ascend into a Wasp Spire that had 11 spirits underneath it to, a, to allow you to burn your opponent for 20, essentially ending the game right then and there, and giving yourself the FTK. Now, you might question, how is this exactly um, uh, consistent? Because you would need to open up, obviously, a bunch of Hephaestus. You need to open up uh, three Exalt Flare and a Wasp Spire. How is this consistent? It's consistent because of the draw engine that Drataya offers. Drataya um, is a very interesting card because you can realistically, especially with Ash Rabbit being able to recur your Ambrosias, you can... Uh, activate your Trataya to probably draw 20 cards in a single turn, um, which is the reason why they elected to ban this. It was for the FTK. However, as weird as it might seem, because Trataya has not once topped before, I think this was the right move. Um, it, it's a card that can get out of hand very, very fast. It was not. It was never once being used for anything fair before Spark got, got banned. Um, sorry, right, basically right as Spark it got banned, there was another FTK uh, with Spark it that Jotaya also enabled just because Jotaya can uh, draw your entire deck. So I think having Jotaya out of the game is actually a good thing. For anyone who also has not seen uh, the Escape from Tartarus version of this card, uh, the new version says you can discard an Ambrosia or a Golden Apple of Discord to draw two. This is a much worse effect, however, it's something I actually very much uh, appreciate. The reason why it's worse, you might question, uh, is because Drataya uh, is no longer a effect that you can use multiple times in a turn. It's a you can effect, meaning it is once per turn, so you're only ever getting a draw two. However, they've um, done something I actually really, really appreciate. They've supplemented that by also having it allow you to draw two by discarding a golden apple, which you weren't, weren't able to, Jotai's effect before was not able to activate if you activate a golden apple that was only Lady God who was able to do that, not Jotai. However, now they made it, made it so that um, golden apple will actually probably be, be played in fruit, despite the fact that fruit is not very good anymore. I think it's a good change, as weird as it seems. I've had a little bit of time to think about it. I didn't expect this. Um, and I just got to, I just got to say one more thing. My God, you guys have no idea how much now that Jataya is banned. I want like a three part YouTube series or something that is just worth going into Tartarus to save Jataya. I want that so badly. <laughs> I want, that would be so, so fun. I really hope they do it. I know they're not going to. But maybe they, maybe they make some, somebody's got to make a meme. Wurtz has got to make a meme about this. Come on, Wurtz, get on it. You can do it. You can save Jataya. Your baby is trapped. You got to go save your baby. <laughs> uh, but that's it for Jataya. Let's get into the limited cards. We no longer only have banned cards. We now have cards that are limited. Um, so limited cards are one singular copy in your deck. Um, and there are three cards limited. So let's quickly talk about these. First one is Lavalith. As much as I want this card banned, this is the step in the right direction. This is such a step in the right direction for a couple of reasons. So, for anyone who did not see my uh, uh, my fives video, I mentioned in that video that I think Lavalith should be banned. I realistically do believe Lavalith should be banned um, because of the fact that it is such an oppressive card. It's a card that is gatekeeping a lot of decks out of the format, more specifically decks that want to run their Divine Runes. Unless, you know, you're Wasp by or FTK, because you'll just FTK them before they get a chance to do anything. But um, Lavalith is a very interesting card because you can normal cast it with two fire, um, 
by just having the same condition as resting on your laurels, your opponent just has two or more enchan enchanting spirits on their side of the field. Uh, Lava With comes down, it's a six attacker, and it pops a back row on cast. This essentially makes us that any deck that is running your Divine Rune, for example, uh, Earth is doing it, Thunder's doing it, Wind is doing it, uh, even Water is doing it to a certain extent. Fire, not so much, except obviously, you know, Wasp Fire FTK. <laughs> but um, every other element, realistically, oh, and uh, obviously, uh, Solar is. Um, Frost, I guess, is also, but Frost, no one's playing Frost. Oh, no, that's a lie. No, Rhinosec is seen some play. Never mind. People are playing some Frost decks. Um, it's gatekeeping a lot of those decks that out of the format just because if you have, let's say, for example, you are playing Thunder uh, and you normal cast, say, a Jolton or whatever, and you disenchant one from your uh, uh, Zeus to, in order to attack over one of your guys, uh, one of their guys. Um, this puts you in a position where your Zeus more than likely will have two spirits on it. Your opponent brings out Lavalith. Not only is Lavalith going to be able to uh, contest the Jolton that they've put out, it's also going to be able to pop the Zeus to essentially burn your opponent for two spirits. Um, and for that reason, I really want Lava with Ban just because it's a card that you can play within fives, the most spirit efficient deck in the game, in order to um, just burn your opponent while also getting a big threat on your field that they now have to contest with. Um, I want to ban. Limited it is fine. It feels bad, to be honest, because now it's one of those things. And Adri talked about this in the banning video. I'm not reacting to that just because I just want to go through my thoughts on this rather than watching that video. Uh, he mentioned how uh, he thinks that the limited list can be controversial just because of the fact that, as I'm saying, it re feels really bad when they draw the sack you want of. However, the fact that now you only have to deal with one Lava List, if you're able to, for example, if they do this whole thing, and then you just go, okay, Tsunami, as, as an example, uh, the Lava List is gonna be dealt with basically next turn, and your opponent got almost no use out of that Lava List. So that's like a good thing that it is now limited. I want it banned. However, limiting it is a step in the right direction. I think that's totally fine. The other two, Resting on your laurels has now been limited. Now, for anyone who has been paying attention to the Elestral's meta game, I talked about my fives deck. Sorry, my my uh, my issue with fives. The next tournament after I uploaded that video, there was a new deck <laughs> that emerged. Heal Stall. So this heal deck is a deck that, to my knowledge, played little to no counter runes. I think maybe Tsunami was like the only counter rune that they were playing. Uh, and they filled their entire deck with Sluggles, Quackles, cards that just heal you. And every other slot was filled with Boom Bat, Resting, EQ, Cryoblast, every single removal card in the sun to deal with every Elestra that your opponent puts out while also being able to just heal you for whatever. And I was seeing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players talking online, this was the Mystic Mind deck of the format, just because you are never able to stick a guy onto your field while uh, being able to apply enough pressure to prevent your opponent from constantly healing back all their stuff. This deck got second at the latest tournament, Jayak on fives got first and I think both of these decks needed to get hit, um, so which is why I'm happy about the Lava with hit. I wish there was a little bit more done to that deck, but I think resting is a fine hit. I think having less removal in the game is fine. There is a ton of removal in this game already. Resting on your Laurels, Earthquake, Cry Out Blood, Boom Bat. If you're playing Thunder, you have Race to the Top. There is so much removal in this game um, that I think cutting down on the best removal cards is a good idea. Um, and this won't, this is not going to feel as sacky as something like a Lava Lith will because of the fact that likely um, decks now that we're playing that sort of style are going to play resting, at, resting to one, that they're going to play one resting, one EQ, but they're also going to play like other removal cards in it like Boom Bats, like your Cryo Blast. So it's not going to feel as bad 
if they hit that earthquake or that resting because they're essentially just filling their deck with as many as they have as many removal cards as they had that removal card could have been anything that would have been able to deal with their board so that's sort of like the idea uh and speaking of which they also hit earthquake so that is sort of the idea that i was kind of getting at i think both of these cards being hit to one is totally fair i think it's totally fine um I think the ba the list where we just banned Sparket was actually a little bit better, just because I think Sparket was a little... Um, Sparket was, like, the problem card of the format um, during its during its time, during Thunder Nexus's Reign of Terror. However, I think as the game has been evolving, uh, we have seen a lot more cards be abusable, uh, and we've discovered sort of what the best deck in the format is going to look like, and that is just a deck that can be the most spirit efficient. If your deck isn't spirit efficient, it's probably not worth playing, which is why I'm happy that we're getting rid of a lot of these tools that make the less spirit efficient decks more viable because there's less removal in the game. That's sort of where my head's at and why I like this list. That being said, I think they could have done a little bit more. I think, for example, Ash Drabbit should have been addressed on this list. Uh, I'm a little shocked that they decided to not go after Ash Drabbit in the slightest. I understand kind of why it's not like... So Ash Drabbit's weird. Ash Drabbit, as I've constantly said, I've wanted Ash Drabbit banned actually for a while now. Um, I think it was also... I think it and Spark It were both the problem cards of the Nexus, so I think both of them needed to get hit to some extent. At this current juncture, though, I think limiting Ash Rabbit is probably the correct idea. I think the main reason, though, they're not doing it is because if they do, Thunder is an unplayable deck. You cannot play Thunder without Ash Rabbit. So I'm hoping Moonrise introduces some additional Thunder Elestrals that sort of change the formula and bring Thunder to more of a competent strategy again to where they can actually effectively go ahead and ban Ash Um, I think that's a good idea, in my personal opinion. So that's sort of like where my head's at. I think this list was good. It addressed a lot of good stuff. I think they could have done a little bit more. Again, Ash Rabbit should have been in this list. And I also think, A-Drive mentioned it in the video, and I disagree with this take, he said that with these hits, Earth Nexus was going to be the best deck in the format, and he thought l limiting Earthquake was a good way, sorry about that, <laughs> was a good enough way to cull the deck down to a more reasonable level and put it on pace with every other deck. I disagree. I think the reason that... Um, Earth Nexus is going to be so good is because of the volley of Elestrals they have access to. Being able to constantly have access to um, uh, Equal Inks, for example, really, really powerful. Uh, Viscerous, still at three copies. Very, very powerful. I wish they would have at least semi-limited Viscerous, because then I could have potentially seen why... Um, I, I wish they at least semi-limited Viscerous. Semi-limited Viscerous, I think, solves a lot of my gripes about Earth Nexus. Despite the fact, I will say, Earth Nexus is a fine deck to play against. It's it's a fives equivalent style deck, but it's not the same thing. It's a deck that is a lot more fair, in my opinion, um, and it's not the most spirit efficient deck in the format, which is why I'm kind of fine with it. I I, I think. The fact that it's not spirit efficient, it's not going to be a super annoying deck to go up against, but it's also not going to be a problem. So I think that's sort of the idea. Maybe they thought the exact same. I wish at the very least, though, they hit Viscerous. I didn't expect them to hit Mudlet or Bloom. I don't think Bloom is the problem card. Mudlet, maybe you can semi-limit it. You, you could argue maybe a limit or a semi-limit it um, to Mudlet. But I think for the most part, semi-limiting Viscerous would have been a good way to kind of cull the deck back and br bring it down to that forefront. I think that was sort of the way to do it. They, A-Drive just said he thought Earthquake, Limiting Earthquake was the way to do it, and I don't think that's enough. I think with this list, there are two decks that come out at the forefront. One is best deck, and one deck that came out as like one of the decks that you could see now all over the place. Earth Nexus, I think, is the best deck in the format as of now. Uh, you could argue that Fives is still the best. I don't think Heal Stall is going to be um, 
as prevalent, just because yes, you can still play the same style of deck, but you've lost four pieces of removal. So I think that's actually very much. Um, Earth Nexus is still the best deck in my opinion, because it didn't really lose anything. I lost two copies of Earthquake, which, I mean, you, you know, you're fine with that if you're an Earth Nexus player, that's totally fine. Um, realistically, I think though, Earth Nexus, I think Fives is no longer the best deck. I think it's still up there as one of the best decks. However, I think uh, Limiting Lava Lith is going to allow decks like Earth Nexus to constantly keep up because of the fact that if you deal with their one Lava Lith, then you're fine. You're able to just basically deal with a one guy every single turn and without Lava Lith, how exactly are they going to be able to attack over say a Viscerous, especially now that Resting and EQ are gone. You might, you could argue maybe Cryoblast? Sure, that's fine. It's still four pieces less of removal for them to run, which I think is very, very good. So that's sort of the idea that I'm coming at, but the one deck, there's one deck that I think got off scot-free that's Rhinosect. And the reason why Rhinosect is fine is because they didn't hit Cryoblast. Uh, I think if they hit Cryoblast, Frost would have been immensely weakened. The fact that they did hit Cryoblast, didn't hit Cryoblast, Frost is now a little bit better. Will it be the top deck? No, I, I would be shocked if Rhinosect makes it in to the conversation as one of the top decks. I, I really, do not believe it's anywhere near that. But that being said, there there's some fun things going on. Uh, because uh, for, to my knowledge, I don't think Rhinosec decks were playing Earthquake. They may have been playing Resting, but they don't. They were not playing Earthquake. But they, obviously you're playing Cryoblast because you have to, you're in Frost. You might as well play Cryoblast. So that's, it, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting to say the least. Um, I think Earth Next is the best deck. I think Fives is still up there. Heal Stall, maybe isn't as powerful anymore. I think it might still be relevant, but I don't think, I certainly do not believe it is as viable as it was. And I don't believe it's going to be at the forefront of the format coming up. I could be wrong. I think it's going to be maybe rogue to like tier two status rather than being the best deck alongside fives. But I, I think this, but this this list did address enough uh, I, in order for it to be considered a good list. I think there's a lot that realistically, a lot more needed to be done, um, but I'm fine with the way that this list turned out. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. I gotta get going, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you slap the, slap the, slap the like button. Subscribe for more. Hope to see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.